Going into the 2012 season, the Ironmen were able to make it to Sunday for every event, but they weren't turning around the results that they wanted. I felt like we were playing real good in Texas uh, on that layout and semifinals against Damage. They came out hot. We were kind of not playing as well as I felt, and it just seemed like we couldn't catch up fast enough. But then they went to win the win that event, so you know they were playing good too. semi-final match to move on to the finals uh, we played the Russians and um, I believe we scored the first three or four points uh, they were playing catch-up throughout the match and they ended up coming back and then it came down to the last minute I believe we were about to tie the match uh, going to overtime you know with the momentum everything in our favor and uh, Brandon Short got a major under the last minute so the point automatically went to the Russians and they, they ended up moving on and we got kicked out of the tournament fucking lost this game because of dumb ass penalties. I'm sick and tired of losing because of penalties. We have great plays when we play with five fucking guys. We lost five points today because we had penalties. You know what we lost by? Five to seven. Five points. They won two points without penalties. I don't understand. How many times is it gonna fucking take for you to learn? I, I don't get it. For us to get put out like that, I think that he just felt that we had a really good chance of going to the top two. So he was just so upset, like, this is our tournament to win, and we just gave it away, you know? That's it. So now we're in Chicago. We're in the quarterfinals against Dynasty. Really close game, both back and forth. Then we go to overtime. Just happens. I mean, we got a lucky break. We shoot, you know, two on the break, a third one right after that. Hey, we, we called hey, this one goal. Another chance. Let's go. We got two more fucking goals. Hey, how good is that? Feel? Fucking oh, great. Hey, 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 not only beating, oh. hey, not only beating, but beating him as a fucking team, dude. Oh, yeah. We walk down the field together, okay. bro. Let's fucking go. That game's mean nothing unless we win this next one. Let's that, go. Yeah, thanks. Let's, Let's, go. Let's go, Martin. One, two, two three, three, team. team. Infamous came out on fire against us on that one. It just felt like we weren't doing anything that really made a difference. It didn't matter how much we tried to do this, do that. I mean, they just went up 6-0. We had nothing really to come back with them. Hey, come on, boys, have faith. Let's go. Let's go, all right, come on. I was trying to pep the team up, you know, saying we can do this, we can do this. Uh, I mean, it got to 6-0. We ended up scoring three or maybe four points, but I mean, it was too late at that point. And we ended up losing the game. So MAO, playing X Factor, going back and forth. Either way, it was 4-4, minute and something left, and we go out, we shoot one on the break, shoot another one. It's basically four on one. All of a sudden, Short, Short has a hit on his arm. Red flag goes up, we lose the game. That to me was real, uh, real heartbreak. Because again, you know, another one, you know, we want to go play, you know, go play for the top two. And just didn't get a chance to do it. Back to the grinder. Well, I'm fucking win already. I'm tired. Like, what do we go to practice for? We're just gonna get fucking major to lose the whole goddamn tournament. Mistakes, mistakes, mistakes. All we do is make mistakes. We never correct any of the mistakes. Just keep making them. Okay. I don't even know. I don't even know what else to say. We were so close. You know, we we would make you know top four like three, four times out of the year. But putting it together and actually going that extra step and winning just wasn't going our way, so it, it was very frustrating. They came up to us, we lend out our hand, they spit in your face, this is your promised land.
After having a disappointing year, the Ironmen come into World Cup with a lot to prove. Mike Hinman left Dynasty after the Mid-Atlantic Open and will help sideline coach the Ironmen for this event. You know, me leaving Dynasty wasn't like when I sent the message out to the guys, sent it to everybody on the team. You know, I didn't feel slighted. I didn't feel negative. I honestly thought it was the best move for them, and they're my friends, and for me. And going to the Ironmen, you know, they're a younger roster. I think my coaching style probably plays better to younger guys. I'm a little more rah, rah, rah. Whereas in guys like Oliver and Yosh, they don't need that. Like, they need somebody like Rusty that is way more X's and O's analytical than I coach off of emotion. So going to the Ironman, I went to World Cup as the sideline coach or the offensive coordinator as we referred to it as, and did my job. And I was positive about it. I was excited to be there. You know, going into Cup, hey, we win Cup. It doesn't matter how the rest of the year went. You know, it doesn't matter that we, you know, we we're top four or whatever. You know, everybody remembers who won Cup. Everything else besides that, they just blend together. So we go play 187 next. Right off the get, they get a major, and the problem is too, it's just inches in the game. You get a major and another team really capitalizes on it, you can put a hurt on the team off the get. Our guys were just doing the job like we were at practice on that snake on that layout, getting down it, getting the kills, opening up that side of the field, turning the guns and you know, short and all the guys, Martin on the Dorito side were handling it. So yeah, we were playing really well at that point. But also 7-0 against teams doesn't really matter until you play the Sunday teams, and if you can 7-0 them, then it's a little bit different. Yeah, Keep this team fucking team 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 We're gonna win this fucking hey, team. Loud team, all right? Uh, One, two, three, ten! The first point against Impact was a long point. Uh, basically what happened was it came down to Eric, A-Rod, and myself. Eric got shot kind of, you know, being antsy. Uh, A-Rod tried to fill out to the corner and then got shot. And I was kind of left alone against three or four dudes. Kind of just made a desperation move and then ended up losing the point. After that, it was, uh, it was a, you know, a fight back and forth. Second point, impact. They come down, he runs down to Bunker, I think I'm watching over him. Bunker's a guy, I'm shooting him. Get a major, he goes, runs in the box. Well, when that happened, we lost another guy. So really, I mean, it was still a close game. We just got kind of lucky, you know, we're sitting there, we're, somehow Brandon's on the other side of the field, I'm in the snake, <laughs> you know, going down. I come down the wire, I see his pack, shoot him in the pack. You know, it was like two seconds till he's coming out of the box. So I'm like, Brandon, wait, we post up. You know, he actually comes out of the box. Brandon really gave it to him. I was kind of like, oh, okay, we're okay. Brandon hangs the flag. It's always good when Brandon's behind me, I'm in the snake. We, it, it always seems to work out better, you know. You know, we're up at one point, we're trying to hold it out. Moorhead just comes flying down the drills like he does and, uh, you know, just put it on us. I mean, you know, it starts just going through us. Tokes last one, last one alive in the snake. Everyone bunkers them, they hang the flag. There was about a minute left. We got into a little huddle and I started telling everybody, you know, how much better we are than these guys. We're not going to go into overtime. This is our match right here and right now. We're going to win. I mean, there's no ifs, ands, or buts. It's win or win. You know, it's all confidence and, you know, what you project is what you'll perfect. And you know, that's what we went out and did. And we ended up beating them with, I think, about 15 seconds left. Let's go, man. We have the best team here. We are going to win. Hey, hey, we are going to win. We are going to win. Hey, 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 round three down. Hey, let's focus on round four. Let's watch this damage game and get ready for that fucking match. Right? One, two, three, team! We beat Impact and, you know, we went into that next match against Damage on a positive note. We were all motivated, the momentum was in our court, this, that, the other. Damage came out to play and, you know, we came out flat. And there's the Sunday team that I was talking about. 
Damage was playing well, Mouse was playing well for them at that event. You give them an inch, it's too late, you know? They ride it like a bow constrictor, like just slowly just squeeze it out of you, you know what I mean? Like, you see a lot of teams will shoot a side of the field out, some guy comes running all the way across the field and makes it alive. It doesn't happen against damage. Their back guys are smart enough to know when they have a side of the field blown out. They set up the turrets and just not getting across. They systematically destroyed us. Every fucking gunfight out there, we fucking drop zones, fucking I don't understand. Simple. I think the hard part with a younger team is that when we're sitting there and they're like, oh, we're into Sunday, this game doesn't really matter even though, you know, you get a buy onto the thing. It's not the same intensity as if you have to win. When you have to win, your back's against the wall, you're going to fight and claw to the death. When you're already going in, like, hey, we're playing on Sunday regardless, there's just that same, not same intensity. It definitely was like, all right, guys, this, this is what a good team's gonna do, and this is, you know, what we need to do to combat that and, you know, overcome with a victory. I'm not even really gonna worry about that damage game because nobody did anything right at all. all. All the way around. We had terrible times getting anywhere. We had terrible times filling. We were not watching zones whatsoever. So I'm just going to pretend that that game did not happen because I assume you guys will fix it. I also think I'm just throwing out there that Rainy and Paxson should be on different lines for the back center. Why? Because they're the best two back centers we have. Most experienced. Hey Rod, right. love you to death, but I mean, how much experience do you have in there? As opposed to, it's Sunday Bay. I don't think it's a bad, that's not a bad idea too. So it's a snake player, correct? He's playing the A. Well, if our snake players aren't getting it done, let's try and send him in there, you know? He's also been playing the A really well until that last match is the only time we ever have. I know, but, but if, if, if we're not moment, getting production out of that moment comes up and there's a slight, like you said, it's, we're down three and our snake guys aren't handling it, yeah. time out, Toad, you're in. Time and out, the gamble, the gamble to Toad. Hey, Toad, we'll give you a chance. Basically, I disagree with his coaching tactic, if you will, I mean, which I probably shouldn't have done, but. I wasn't the only person that felt it on the team. I just was the only person that had enough gumption to actually tell him, like, hey, this, you know, this isn't going to work. I think against Infamous, I have a great idea. I'm going to give up the Dorito side and not even shoot over there. Not shoot? No. Not until they start running wide. Skinny laid our game plan out that we weren't going to attack the Dorito side against Infamous, I believe it was. And a lot of the guys were kind of like, if you put all the pressure to get down one side of the field, it's going to be tough, you know what I mean? It can't piss me off because it wasn't my team to control. It was, I wasn't the head coach. And I'm not, you know, despite what people think about my personality, I have no problem just being an Indian and not the chief, you know what I mean? Like, it was skinny show and, I mean, we were going to follow him through the gates of wherever we were heading, you know? It is completely counterproductive. For any coach, me, Skinny, Steve, if people do not do the job that's laid out, don't worry about anything else but your job. That's all you can do. You, you're not the coach, you're not the play caller, you're not this, we ha all have to go out there and do our one piece. Hey, even look other. forward, this whole fucking turn is done, dude. Tomorrow's a whole new fucking piece, right? Hey, ba baby team on three. One, two, three, three. baby team. Tied match, crucial point, Infamous has it. They shot all of us, it's me and Shorty. This is their point, it's actually a five on two. I'm like, Shorty cross up, we crossed up. I think he yelled a switch call, he saw Bobby crawling down the, down the snake. I come out, just having to clip him in the back, boom. All right, great, we got a nice G. Shorty picked up one, somehow all of a sudden he, you know, I see him going. So I'm like, all right, here we go. He goes, he makes the X wrap around, I shoot the X. He's all the way, almost all the way through. I see him doing a dance with the guy in the Dorito shoot him and all of a sudden I'm looking, the dust is clearing and I'm like, are we good? Like, what just happened? I run through, grab the flag, we take that point away from him. Huge swing point. Very next point, they come back, tie it up. Now we're back into, you know, all right, you know, hey, we were, you know, we were there. They came back, ran right through us. It was two to two tie. We had two guys left. 
They were closing the game out, they were on our side of the field, and then Damian ended up getting a major through throughout when all that went down, because he was he was the guy in the X, and I think it was under a minute, so we automatically got the point to uh, to advance us on to the next round. I mean, that was a nail biter, it was back and forth, and to be honest, I mean, it, it didn't look good for us, that's for sure, but everybody stepped up to the plate. Bloody knuckles. Bloody knuckles. Bloody knuckles. Bloody knuckles. Bloody knuckles. Bloody knuckles. Hey, feel it into the next game, man. Every fucking move, every fucking step. 120%. Let's go. Team on three. One, One two, three, team. team. First point, long point. We're going down. Speaker goes, makes a good move. You know, shoots him. Looks like Chad, you know, Chad cheated. Gets a gets a major. We're going on. We're trying. You know, we're like, all right, here we go. Let's amp it up. Let's you know, let's get some points off this major. They start tearing it down. Goes on to a one on one. Abisca's playing it smart. Just sits back, waits. Gonna make it a two on one when the guy comes out of the box. We blow the buzzer. We're like, well, let's keep him in the box. We'll start five on four. Come on, come on, come on. We break out. Things are going. We're going good, and then uh, Ryan gets a major penalty. We're like, oh, man, you know, damn the bad luck. So we're sitting there, and now, now we're on the defense. And then we end up losing that point, and now we're starting to trickle down. They just did a great job. I mean, they did the same thing over and over with very little variation, but it worked. It just came down to simple gun battles, you know? You're going to be in this spot, this guy's going to be in this spot, and who gets shot, you know? They, on that day, outperformed us and, and just beat us, you know? Skinny stuck by his game plan. You know, we didn't we didn't deviate from the game plan. It was like, hey, this is what's going to go on. We couldn't put points on the board with what we were doing. They just we just kept running the same game plan. Same outcome comes out. The people that were playing definitely they definitely put their hearts and heart and soul into it. I mean, but also too, I think we just ran them down too much. Certain people only play so good until they're tired. When they're when they get overtired, they're not sharp. And you know, it's time to put some fresh legs in, try something else. But. We just kept trying to hit it like, hey, this is what's going to work, and it just didn't work. Bloody Knuckles! Bloody! Knuckles! Bloody! Knuckles! Bloody! Knuckles! Fight to the fucking game! There was two different houses. Skinny's house, all the guys in that house played a lot, and the guys, some of the guys in our house didn't, so there was definitely clear division on the team. I mean, I think Pax didn't play but like a point on Sunday. LJ didn't play any points on Sunday, and a lot of guys had a feeling that was coming. The team was very focused on winning the event, but there was definitely some weird vibe in the room. After the frustrating 2012 season, the Ironmen come into 2013 looking for a fresh start. During the offseason, Kevin Bredthauer leaves the team to coach Tampa Bay Damage. Mike Hinman takes over as the head coach for the Ironmen. There were also quite a few roster changes to the team. There was no plans to come in and switch things up, you know? Ryan Martin, you know, said college and life had caught up with him. You know, everybody says, like, Short left the team because that's what he wanted to do. I mean, that's just a bold-faced lie. I believe Dynasty slash HK had given him a pretty good financial offer to go over there and play with them. Spica, I'm sure if he got the same deal matched that he was getting on the Ironmen to go over there, he was going to go because those guys are friends. Rainey, he called me to tell me he was leaving. I didn't ask him not to leave. I just simply asked him how much, and it was more than he was getting with us. So, you know, Joey can say what he wants. He knows he came after us because Mouse decided to come back and play with us. So he came after one of our players and wanted to, you know, assert his authority. So it was by like, oh, we lost three more dudes. Call three more up, you know what I mean? The Russians were probably one of the best organizations I've ever played for. I had a really good time playing with them and I definitely learned a lot. But when I had the opportunity to come back and play with the LA Ironmen, which is the team that I started my career with, I decided I wanted to do that. 2012 was kind of like my school grind. I needed you know, buckle down. Marcelo called me and I felt like I could balance the two and uh, I decided to play. With Damage, you know, that's a great team and I knew I'd probably have a pretty good season with them just because their whole team's strong, they got talent. 
but I wasn't going to play as often if I was only going to fly for practice. So I, you know, and I wanted to play a lot this year, and uh, Ironman plays almost every weekend. So, if you had set a World Cup last year, this is going to be your team this year. I'd have been like, you're crazy, man. Like, there's no way we're going to change that many bodies. I didn't want to change that many bodies, but it worked out how it did, and I'm happy it is what it is. And we're happy with our team. I mean, we got a whole new team. I mean, there's about 30% of us left from the original squad from last year and the year before. So it's different, but the only thing constant in life is change. And all you have to do is embrace change for it to be a positive thing rather than a negative, you know? A day before the event, the Ironmen have a practice against Edmonton Impact and will test their skills as a newly reformed team. Snake three! Snake three! Come fuck on, man. Danny, wipe his back off, please. Act like you guys are on the same team. I thought you shot. It's really nice, dude. Really nice. Practice impact, they just kicked the crap out of us. Like, that's simply put. They had the field better wired than we did. Impact was like the first team to start landing us out off the break and actually getting in there before us. So we were just like, wow, what if, like, do we have to switch up lines, game plans? Like, we started questioning things. I don't need you to be a fucking superstar. I just need you to do a job, dude. If you're the one, that means you attack. If you're the two, you just keep that guy alive. I mean, really, do I have to explain that to your monkey ass? You guys are all hyped up about being on this team and wearing this jersey, but there ain't no heart behind it right now. That's the fucking problem. I have more worry about his fucking back of his knee than I have my bottom four guys on my team right now. That's the truth. You want to hear it. Well, I'm more worried about his knee than I am. You, you, you. A lot of our coaches now are like, you know, okay, you know, and they comfort them and they, you know, okay, this is where you're going to go. This is where you're going to shoot. You're going to do this, do that. Mike's like, hey, you should already know all that. You know, we're playing pro. You know, and we're not playing t-ball. You have to go earn what you're going to do. Like right now, we're not going to run two lines. Don't ask. Nobody asks the packages. We'll run multiple packages like we always do. But don't expect to see 10 dudes rotating through those packages. You know what I mean? You guys got to go achieve. You got to earn that shit, you know? He let us have it, you know, he told us, like, this, this is how it's going to be, and we might be going to a bare-bones roster just because certain people weren't cutting it, you know what I mean? I would say he laid into us, but in a good way, and kind of opened our eyes and been like, dude, I got to play harder, I got to play tighter, I got to play smarter. So it, it was for the better, that's for sure. Whatever the game plan is, if you get told to do something, you have to do that shit with fucking blind obedience until the ball hits you. You have to. And I, what I'm seeing out of you guys is not that. You're out there like worried that like something else and they're gonna come down here. It's practice, dude. It's just practice, man. We could have done basic shit like they did. Double the apple, go here, one here, one there. We ran, man, we ran everywhere. You know what I mean? We definitely tried to take real estate. Impact chopped us up doing it, you know? I'd say they won 75%, beat us pretty good. But that's fine, it doesn't matter. You can lose and practice all day and win at the tournament. So let's hope that's what it is or maybe we got a long weekend ahead of us. For their first match of Dallas, the Ironmen will be up against the Tauntauns. The Tauntauns, I've seen them play in Europe quite a bit, so it wasn't a big surprise for me. I knew that they were going to be a good team, they're aggressive, they apply constant pressure, so I knew it was going to be a tough game going into it. When they put some points on the board, we, yeah, I think it was 2-1, to one, and I remember there was a real long point with Mouse and I. And We'd shot their first snake snake guy, and I was behind Mouse. I felt like that was a huge point for us to win, because once we won that point, we kind of got the gears going. I think it was one of those things where, you know, all of a sudden you're down two points, and you realize, well, this is, this is the first match of the first tournament of the season. We need to get it together and show what we can do. Winning the Tauntaun game, I, I definitely think it was an individual performance and not necessarily a team Ironman performance. A-Rod had a couple great games, Mal shot a few people and so did Marcelo, so yeah, definitely individuals and not team Ironman. Listen up, man. That was a win and all, but dude, guys are acting like, again, younger guys, we need 7, 8, 9, and 10 to step up. This ain't saying it. You have to want this shit from every being. Lack of discipline. 
dumb fucking major. We talked about this shit. We are better than this. But we got guys that think that they are better than the fucking team. We need to watch Seattle. They're going to play right now. We need to watch this fucking game in 10 hey, minutes. Individuals, individuals won that game. We cannot fucking survive on that play. Two man operations okay? communicate across the board. Team on three. One, One two, three, team. team. When you play a team like Thunder, it's surviving the breakout, you know, trying to keep four or five guys up in a good position and then, you know, trade bodies, shoot some guys. If I took our top five guys that time and put them on the field, we should be able to win eight, nine out of ten points, you know, just what it is, you know. Let's go, Ironman, right now! No more yelling, let's fucking go do our jobs. I like to look at those games and nothing to knock them, but I like to look at them to get yourself in a rhythm, you know, be as aggressive as you can. And I think the first point I just, I went down the Dorito side and was just, every time I came out of my bunker, I was able to shoot somebody. So it was one of those games. The last guy was in the back center, kind of like stand-up can and A-Rod bunker and we kind of, he shot him a lot. He shot him from like the ass to the head, and as the guy's walking off, A Rod's kind of like walking off with him, looking pretty mean and tough. Way to fucking be, kid! I saw you coming through. I said, "Oh, the hatchet's about to." That's how A Rod is, you know. Like super nice kid off the field, really passive. But when he goes on the field, like the other side of him comes out. Guys, we're playing good, but we're not playing great. Playing good. We're not playing great. Right now, this next 20 hours before our next game, that's where we decide if we're gonna step up and be excellent or are we just gonna be good, you know what I mean? We will always strive for perfection on this team. Until we win the championship, then I will say you did your job. Until then, we gotta keep learning, you know what I mean? Let's go get our stuff together, get all our shit together. Hey, I wanna say one thing, man, thank you guys. You guys are making it easier for me to do my job, okay? We can still step it up a little bit on some little shit, but thank you. It was a good day. Let's go tomorrow. Let's fuck some people up, okay? This is what we do. Hey, another way to be, eh, Rod? Fuck, okay. Dino stop that little bitch. Team. And then you walk them off. Yeah. <laughs> Two, three, <laughs> The Ironmen finished their first day on a good note, winning both their preliminary games. Their first match in the morning will be against Upton 187 crew. 27 is a good young team. They're not in your face, fast, aggressive, going to blow you off the field. But if you make mistakes, they're going to take advantage of the mistakes and beat you. That game was back and forth. That team I respect. You know, they came straight from divisional. They didn't pick up one already pro player. They stuck with their team, came from D1 straight to pro. That team came out swinging off the bat. And I knew they were going to be a good game against us because they have a similar style with attacking, aggressiveness. And they're young too. We went down a few points actually. I know one point I think I won a one on two against them. And, uh, Went down and bunkered the Dorito guy and it came down to a one-on-one against Nick Laval over in the snake side. Unfortunately, I got a shot on him. One at seven, they always come out strong. You know, they're a team that they're, they're eager to prove themselves right now, so you can't take them lightly. You know, you're up five to two and the time's running low and you kind of play defense a little bit to try to kill some time, but I think they are playing real aggressive and they scored some quick points. <laughs> started coming back and uh, honestly if they would have had enough time they probably could have tied it and sent it to overtime but luckily we came away with the win. Again guys not not a clean game dude. Oops whoops I fucked up got shot. The mental discipline man that's what we need dude. We got to get fucking smarter man. Like hey Rod, you got a bad stop. Do you know, did you know that we were up 2 points? Why just run through the middle of the field? That makes no sense man. 
how many times in a tournament can you guys come off after a game and, you know, one-on-one -on -one be like, Mike, I totally fucked up that game, man. I've had like seven guys say that in three matches. And probably another 15 of them should have said it. Until you guys all decide that we are not going to lose, we are going to lose shit. Understand that we are going to win if we do everything we can on that field to win. I don't care what the situation is. If we're down bodies, you look to the person next to you and you figure out how you're going to go shoot somebody. Don't be on your heels, always be on your toes and go forward until we have a first fucking place. I believe in every one of you guys. We're fucking a good team. Let's go prove that this next game. We need people to step up and fucking, when you get a chance to go in, go want to shoot three people. No matter what the situation, dude, just refuse to lose. That's what it comes down to. Don't not want to lose, refuse to lose. That's it. That's it, man. We were playing, I don't want to say like, not good teams, but we were playing weaker teams in, in the, the league, you know? So once we did face, you know, a good team like Infamous, I mean, it showed, you know, what we can and can't do. As a team, dude. The momentum's changed, I felt like, when, and maybe it was maybe three to one, and it was a four on two. It was Nikki and Damien. We lost the point. We had all the spots and we just got shot out of our bunkers. What? What? I lost mean, guys, this game. What else can we do, man? Live. We're fucking stacked up here. There's nowhere to fucking go. Stay the fuck alive. That hey, doesn't mean die. I can stay alive for fucking 900 hey, guys, games. Guys, 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 I am at three points, ten minutes. Let's go. Hey, come on, guys. Look forward. I think we got a couple stupid penalties myself. <laughs> I got two minors, I think, that match, which kind of hurt us because it was in crucial times. Just when we were up bodies, that lost the point. Well, I even admitted to the refs, good call. Like, I had no clue I was playing on or else I would have got rid of it, so. <laughs> our back guys, that were, you know, our laners and stuff were just getting picked apart and Infamous did a great job on it. I mean, it's a, Infamous is a good team, you know? And Damien right now is one of the top three on any given day. And Damien's game is further amplified when you don't put pressure on him. Like, he's the kind of guy, like, if it was basketball, you gotta double team him. You gotta put Oliver, Ryan, guys like that have to be pressured to make bad choices. Because if you allow them to just sit there and play paintball, then they played well. Hey, better today than tomorrow, man. Learn everything we can in this last fucking four or five points before we have, okay? Let's hey, go. We can fucking come back plenty of time, dude. We got this shit. Seven, 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 Mike made a good adjustment before we ended up losing that match. Uh, he put me on that D side and I started attacking pretty quick. They were beating us again like 6-2 and we came back 6-4 and they scored the last point 7-4. You have to want this, man. You have to fucking want this. I mean, I'm pretty good with my numbers. Six to two is a tough uphill road to go against. There was dudes that believed we could win that. Now, as mad as I knew it was gonna be tough, but I knew if we kept winning points quick, we could do it. You have to believe, man. Hey, hey, all this fucking off season, we have grinded and we have worked our fucking asses off, all right? Whoever the fuck we play tomorrow, they should be scared of us. Right now, they're not. We're fucking Iron Man, not pussies. I just want to say one thing about today and that, and that infamous game. I really appreciate how everybody acted. You know, we were down points, the ship was not going right, the stuff was not going well, and we did not turn on each other. Situations like that are going to happen. We have to first keep calm the way we did. We have to have just a little more gumption a little bit sooner, you know? Because we started, we started coming back swinging, but it was just a little too, you know, too little too late. But we can do it. It shows that we can do it no matter what. And tomorrow, we really need to come out and win those first two. It's been our biggest downfall this event, dude, is we're kind of climbing from the back, you know? We just need to go out with nothing to lose, dude, all right? Just everything to win, nothing to lose. Just go out there and play like we can. 
Start tomorrow, like we finish the game today. Right? <clears throat> we finish the game way up. We start the game way the fuck down here, we finish it way up here. So we start tomorrow when we end it today. And watch how the fucking things will roll our way tomorrow. It's all to us, you know, right? If we win this, we play for this. Again, like that's the winner of our game because it's done. And then the finals. That's all we gotta do, man, one step at a time. Sunday morning, I, I felt excited. You know, we were going to play Dynasty. It's uh, obviously an immediate rival, you know, losing Kyle Spick and Brandon Short to go over to them. And that morning, I was, I was like, this is it. It's awesome, you know. We were in the quarterfinals. We, we beat Dynasty in two more games. We're going to win the tournament. So going into the match, I, I felt very confident. It was a pretty back and forth match. Uh, I know we lost the first point, won the second one, you know, went back and forth and got to the point where uh, Alex Frazee did get that major penalty. And anytime a team gets a major, you want to capitalize and try to keep as much time on that clock as, as possible. So Blake ended up being the last one alive, and you know, unfortunately for him, I just <laughs> had to run and get him. Hey, let's get ready to turn. Penny, paint. Hey, I got you. I got you. Hey, Tiger. Hey, paint. Hey, they got a major too, Mark. Coming into their penalty, we wanted to win a quick point and get as many points as we could on the penalty. And we had all the spots. I was in the A, I think Mouse was in the 50 Dorito. And we shot Spica, their first guy off the break. So it was Ryan in the second bunker on the snake and Yosh and, and Glenn on the Dorito side. I remember looking at the clock with four seconds left on the penalty. And I was like, all right, I'm just gonna shoot Alex coming out of the box. So I kind of just committed myself to killing him. And Glenn shot me in the, in the feet underneath the A. Marcelo saw me die. Marcelo tried to fill the center. He got shot. Then Mouse tries to bunker Glenn and Yosh in the line at that point. Yosh just had great timing and shot him coming. What in the f Come on, guys, we've talked about this in the meeting. You're throwing this away for us, guys. I shot Ryan earlier, though. That's the difference. Ryan played on. Hey, people cheat in paintball. It's crazy, I know. Let's go. Marcelo left the fucking wire again. We can't do that. We talked about that in the meeting. We never had an even attack on that Dallas layup. It was always like we either won the game from the center from, with Steven Pitts or A-Rod or me on the snake side, or LJ and Marcelo down the Doritos. We never had a full team attack. I mean, there was flashes of it, and we would shoot two or three real quick and just win it as a team, but other than that, it was individuals winning points for us, and obviously that's not gonna work for you on Sunday. I believe Toke was in front of me, and we worked Toke into the snake. I filled the corner. I think we were down bodies, and they were already pressing the Dorito side. And I could hear the sideline say, you know, he's coming, and you know, I, I wrap inside, but couldn't wrap inside too hard to shoot him. He flops, you know, flops over Bunker's toke. And at that point, I'm in a rough spot, so my only chance is to run at him. So I counterattack him, bunker him. He sees me out of the corner of his eyes, so he's swinging his gun, but I shoot him while it's happening. He shoots me, gets a major, which was great for me, because I, you know, I felt like I knew Alex came into the snake with me. I knew he was gonna die on the penalty, and there was two guys. But I didn't know Dalton had ran completely behind me, so I come up looking for Yosh, and Dalton is behind me, and, and that you know that kind of steeled the match. Hey, let's go, boys! Have faith. We fucking got this, man. We got this. Let's go. Hey, let's go. Let's go right now. They know we have to come. I tried to come through the center into their tower, which is off to the left of the, on the D side of the X. I mean, they already had balls there. By the time I got around the X, I was out. A Rod was at the X. He was trying to make something happen. And just not enough time. I mean, it's always good if you're going to lose at a tournament. I'd rather lose to the team that wins the thing. And being a close game like that, I mean, we all went home like, I mean, it was right there. It was on the tips of our fingers. But truthfully, you know, not that day. It was not like it got stolen from us. Dynasty took it. Like, they asserted their will on us.
After the Dallas event, Tokohi Hamill left the team to play with the San Jose Royalty, and Eric Humphreys leaves the team because of work. However, they pick up former Aftermath player Mike McCormick and are having a two-day practice with Dynasty a week before the Mid-Atlantic Open. At that time, I felt they were the best team to practice and they were going to give us the best look. You know, I think it's great to play the team that wins, wins or even if they knock you out, why not learn from them? So obviously that was your weakness. It's out! Oh, come on, baby! Hey, Pete! Hey, Cobra! 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 Come on! Let's fucking go! Out of the way, boy! Come on! Uh. Okay. Woo! Woo! The mouse is hot today! The mouse is hot today! On Saturday, things were just going our way. It felt like we were able to do whatever we wanted on the field. No disrespect to Dynasty, but it, we just, it just wasn't even competition. Sunday, however, was a completely different day. They changed their game plan, they slowed the field down, and the first, like, three points in a row, for these long drawn out points. I think they lasted seven to eight minutes each, you know, at least. And, uh, and they won all of them, you know? So we went back and we adjusted. And I think it, it helped us tremendously figure out how to slow down the field and work together to try to get those wins in those long games. We really learned a lot. And uh, we got to play 50 plus points on the uh, layout against, you know, the team that won the event. I really feel confident that this tournament will be the start of our winning team. Because once we win once, and we know that we can win, and we know how easy it is, it's going to be really, really hard to, to beat our team. That's for sure. The most important thing is just that we don't lose who we are and what we are. Like, we went into event one, but I don't think we really realized how much it was going to take for us to win that event. You know what I mean? It was like, we got Miles, we got Marcel, we got all these new guys. Like, they're great fucking man. We're going to go do this shit. And, you know, kind of humbled us all to get knocked out. And we by so close on Dynasty and they won the event that beat us. You know what I mean? We know what we put in for that tournament. And we know how we did that tournament. Now we have to put in more than that in order to win a tournament, you know? Winning, it's just about getting on that fucking roll. It's not that much harder than what we've already put in for effort. You know what I mean? We don't believe that we can win. That's why we haven't won. If we believe, uh, did your mind so powerful, dude, that we, if we've imagined the trophy in our hands, we're fucking drinking beer, whatever the fucking case may be, project it till you perfect it, dude. That's what it is. The grass ain't greener on the other side. It's what we do in this room, you know? For their first match of MAO, the team will be up against San Antonio X Factor. Playing X Factor, you never really see same play necessarily over and over again. I feel like they do a lot of different things, which is hard to play against. You never really know what to expect. It's fun to play against a team like that though, because they're aggressive and it's just fun to always be on your heels but at the same time on your toes, you know, attacking back. You know? We're down by one, I think it was three to two. Um, McCormick made a good move to bunker the, the last snake guy, so we're three on three and you're playing to, to take a lead and possibly win the match, especially on a field that may be playing slow. Hey, the clock, hey, the clock's our friend. The clock is our friend right now. That's my dude. Good job. Way to play. Hey, get yeah. better every fucking That's play. A w, Come on. Hey, good shit. Good start. Team on three. One, One two, two, three. Ten. Ten. The game was playing slow. I think our first point was eight minutes long, maybe. The game kind of broke open in our favor, and I started on the attack, and I started to get to their side of the field, and it may be the fastest snapshot I've ever seen in my life. Steven, you had that, man. You get scared? Come on, guys, come on. It was two to zero. Uh, we were down against damage, and I remember just losing our entire snake side and looking over at Steven Pitts, and I'm like, we're going to win this point. Steven, just stay alive. We're going to win this point somehow, you know, some way. Sure enough, like I end up getting a shot on their Dorito guy. Steven at the same time gets a shot on the snake guy. And then I think Jacob Edwards, he, he tried coming up to the X and then I shot him underneath the X. 
then it was a two on one against Rainey in the corner. Yeah, we ended up pulling out the game, and for me, that was a huge momentum shifter. You know, if, if that doesn't inspire the team, I don't know what is going to. Be. Yeah, boy, let's go! Hey, let's go. Hey, look forward, let's go! No matter what, we're gonna win. The league. The Ironmen have had an issue stacking up against damage, and their players. Damage is a smart team. We needed to fix the mistakes we were making and play better and play more as a team. That was the biggest issues I think we had at that point. We just weren't firing all cylinders, you know? We died out of our bunkers a lot. We shot them. Go ahead, you're they gonna say something stupid right they, now and I can't wait to hear it. You're gonna be already smiling at they me. They shot what? two of us on the break one game off this side. Two games. Two games. Two games, okay, it's not much. dying out of your bunker when they shoot two off yes. the side. We still had games that we, and when we lost guys, we still had, we're in positions to win games, and we still died out of our bunkers. Right? That's fine, but still we could have made But nothing, position. there's no buts in it, Marcelo. As a player, he sees the field downhill, and as a coach, I see it from the side, you know. Marcelo's very headstrong. I'm obviously pretty headstrong. There's just disagreements about the right ways to play a field, you know? I, I can't wait to watch the video with you so we can sit and watch it together about what could have gone different because we, 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 against a team like that, if we don't get outside at all, we are fucking dead. We had a little disagreement just on what we should change just because I wasn't making it out and I, I, I figured we should try something else. But, uh, you know, in the end, it's always the coach's call and I have faith in Mike's decisions. Dude, if we honestly want to put it, I, I will take all the blame for this. You guys no, played okay. fucking great not out there. Mike. But that's a, but no, but you're not being productive at all with what you're saying. Not one time did you guys come in and say, hey, let's put a guy on edge over here and do this. It's just we're getting shot going here. I agree. They're a great shooting team. There's fucking one or two of those points we easily could have won, and that scoreboard looks a lot different. We can't shoot our own guys off the fucking field. Yeah. We can't get shot not knowing, like, oh shit, there was a guy here. Like, that's, I mean, we lost. That's just, it was like fucking loss. I hope we learn from it. These motherfuckers are gonna be hungry. Come on! I think there's gonna be a fucking easy point, okay? Come on! You motherfuckers need to come out swinging like it's the last game of paintball you're ever gonna play. Yeah! yeah. Uh, I want that let's go! Get deep on these motherfuckers, okay? Make everybody feel you. This is the Iron Man. It's what the fuck uh, we're about. Let's go! Brothers. Team on three. One, two, three. Team! To it was crucial on this field just because you could slow the field down if the team had to come at you chances are they weren't going to get that point because it was just too easy to lock it up and shoot people trying to come at you we got the first point and somehow let them back in the game I remember getting shot out of my bunker in a crucial point against Damien. I was behind Danny Park. That kind of hurt us because Steven and Marcelo were trying to put something together on the D side right before I got shot. Unfortunately, probably lost us the point because Mike conceded it. Here, let's go, Iron Man. I believe they got some G's on the break, and we lost some bodies. Some guys got shot silly. We could have played a whole lot better, and we didn't. The team that was the team that played last Sunday, I promise you, has yet to show up at this event. God damn it, we got to play together. Shoot your fucking guns together, running down the fucking field together, and having a goddamn good time together. I'm fucking sick of it. God damn it, man. How long do we gotta fucking do this by ourselves? Obviously you can't! Obviously it can't be done by your fucking self! Steve is very frustrated after this game because he knew in his mind that the Ironmen were not playing up to our potential. And to hear him come over and actually, I don't even want to call it yelling, it was like his heart was talking, you know? It was, uh, it was 
very felt by the entire team and I think it was something we needed. It was it was something that everybody kind of took back and was like, wow, you know, we need to get it together. You never want to play in the, the relegation match. So winning the Tauntaun game is, it's like a life or death situation for a paintball player. We wanted to press the tempo against them, but on that layout it was just tough, you know what I mean? Like there's no need to take unnecessary risks to just run down the field. Let's mirror up with what they do, we're better than they are, they're gonna be winded. I mean literally they ran the same guys over and over and over and over. I don't care how good a shape you're in, it's gonna get mentally drained. We had a call on this field, it was, it was switch. It means that I'm being put in and they're gonna fly down this Dorito side. Nobody can stop them otherwise. So uh, there was a bunker in between Paxson and I, and I guess you didn't hear me, and I ended up getting bunkered. We ended up losing that point. Fuck! Paxson, man. What? I need you to listen, dude. What? I'm screaming bloody murder if you look this way. Talk to me, man. I'm trying, motherfucker. Yeah. 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 I do shit. I'm fucking like this. There's fucking. Guys, you're actually winning the game. Hey, we're winning. Calm down, guys. With a 2-2 two two record, the team still manages to sneak into Sunday. They will have a rematch with the team who knocked them out of the Dallas event, San Diego Dynasty. Crazy path that we took to get to where we're at. I would honestly say we've played 50% of what we're capable of playing. I'm going to try to keep this to as few words as possible and not just beat the dead horse. The blowing up in the pit <laughs> shit will not happen anymore, guys. If somebody goes, if, you know, you guys went at it, but we had other guys going back and forth. If McCormick tells Danny he's stupid, dumb, and retarded for any move, expect to be sitting a lot. Marcelo, you do it, expect to sit a lot. Paxson, you will sit a lot. Mouse, you will sit a lot. We will not have our identity be a team that fucking erupts in the pit. I can see no benefit to doing that. And you're talking about a guy that's broken clipboards on people. You know what I mean? And that was the most wrong thing I could have ever done. We all know LJ's the most likely to probably freak the fuck out. LJ's the most likely to be the most positive fucking dude when you two fucking dudes or you two dudes are on the field to be like, we got this, here we go, right now, motherfuckers, let's go. They're gonna win this shit, look who we got on the field. I've heard him say that since Dallas more times than I've heard the rest of the team say it combined. And that's the kind of shit we need to keep going forward. Like, we all have a faith in each other. We have to just make it fucking happen. You know, today, I may have lost my mind when I said it, but, you know, I meant what I said. You know what I mean? We've had flashes of playing what we envisioned this team doing. When you guys finally start this, when this reminds right here, this fucking league's in trouble. You know? Not just tomorrow, but the rest of the fucking year. Let's fucking find that. You know? Find it in each other. Get after it. Imagine that motherfucking trophy in your hand right now. We've already won the tournament, okay? Seriously, mentally. One step closer. Reject it until you fucking perfect it. <laughs> Team on three. One, two, three. Team! Let's go, baby. Come on! Come on! If we're gonna play someone, why not play the guy that beat us the last tournament and knocked us out? We expected them to play the way they played in the practice on Sunday, as a slow, conservative game plan. To beat Dynasty on this field layout, we had to shoot Yosh off the break and win the first point. Once we did that, we would be fine because we'd make our spots and then make them come to us and make them play into our game. That was how this field played. And sure enough, we, we got our G off the break and it was Yosh. Everything went as planned. Corey stepped out, shot Yosh off the break. And so once Corey finally was able to fill behind me, we, we set it up to move, to move me down the field. And as I'm going to the Dorito too, I, you know, Corey is wrapped and shoots me in the back of the head. And that, at that point, it was it was five on four before that, so giving them a body back that they didn't earn, you know, I, it sucks. Shouldn't have shot my own team in the back of the head. 
shit like that can't happen. I got a shot on Alex Frazier cross field, so we still had the body advantage. And then I started trying to make some moves, and unfortunately, Dalton made a really good move. He stepped out wide on the tape and, and clipped me in the side of the, the side of the mask. Um, and from that point, it was a three on three, and Dynasty was able to pull that out. So that, that first point was was huge. From that moment on, we were forced to go into their guns. That Kelly and Apple kept switching on that zone, right? Yeah, the same shit we knew they were gonna do. I mean, not a, yeah, we're I fucking see. overthinking this. We can't shoot our own guys off the field, dude. do is go to that first Dorito and pound it right on the snake side and that made it so I couldn't play that snake or Danny Park so that was huge because our push most of the time was coming from that snake side so if you took that away from us we weren't getting down the field. Hey, you get the chance. Danny was in the 50 snake, I was in the snake behind him. I had told him to look inside, knowing that Frazier was gonna come down the tape. Literally 10 seconds later, Frazier comes down the tape. I put the balls on him way before he gets to him. Ref notices that. Major goes up, Mike concedes the point. Oh, that's a Major, hey, Major on the, no! Oh, he's just got a Major. Danny Park didn't hear it, starts playing and wilding out, going for the flag. They start shooting him, I start shooting back. All of a sudden you literally just see like 4th of July, you see a bunch of flags go everywhere. So I'm in the pits like, whoa, what is going on? You know, I have no clue what's going on. What are you, we conceded the point. The know, point was conceded. 89's in the box, 27's in the box. You don't fucking shoot your gun when the game's over. They were shooting us when the game's over. So all three of them have so three on three? And after about 20 minutes of all the refs discussing this, uh, come to find out we're gonna be playing Three of us versus two of them. <laughs> so they have three majors, we have two majors. So we were like, okay, here's our chance, let's go. You know, we're down 3-0, but we got plenty of time. We can we can pump out some serious points here. They have two bodies on the fucking okay. field. So they're gonna go to each tower. Okay. Shoot the insides of the towers. First point, Marcelo shoots B short off the break, and then we pretty much just run down the field and we double bunker Glenn. I guess it looked pretty bad. Same line? Same line? Same line, you guys turn it? I told my guys, I'm like, look, if we don't get the G, I'm still gonna go up the center, I'm gonna try to do something. It may or may not work, let's just try to try to make moves around it. Let's get these points quick while they have the penalty. And I end up going into their side of the field and, and Ryan just gets a really good shot on me. And that brings it to a two on two. I think LJ got shot out of the snake. I ran down the field on a two on one and bunkered Yosh at that point with one on one with Ryan and I knew he didn't know where I was at so I figured I could just go run him down and the coach got to him before before I did. That was a big point for them. We had that three on one. We stay in the 50s. Even if we let the penalty out, we chop all of them down when they come out. We come out with five fucking guns. So we just threw a point on. Mike, sorry dude. I'm, I'm sorry. I was just trying to go. If he didn't move into snake one, it would have been fine. No, we're not shooting this way. Should I just fucking fly down the side? Yes. The we gotta try something, dude. At least get into position where we can chop the fucking box up when they come out. So the next point, we still have our players in the box, and right before the game was about to start, Danny Park was trying to get our attention from the box, telling us, you know, make sure to get in position to shoot them. We're like, okay, we got it, and as we were saying that, the horn blows. So we try to touch up, we break out, Steven gets shot going wide, and I, I take a bounce, so I'm thinking I'm hit, and I'm walking off. I never called myself out or anything, and I look down, I'm like, oh, it didn't break. So I like, kind of run back to the corner. Marcelo shifts back over to the D side. Danny and I come out of the box. They have their three come out of the box. I think we shoot one of them and all that chaos. Danny fills over snake side. I come behind Marcelo down the Doritos. Marcelo makes a really good move and bunkers out Dalton and shoots Tyler Harmon on the way. And somehow they only ended up with one alive, which was Greenspan and the 50 snake. And it was just me. He had no idea where I was. I looked inside from the Dorito, shot him rapping, sprinting the flag in. We live for this shit! Got it, got it. Let's go! 
Come on! Step out on the snake side and then go up to the orange. Shut it the fuck down. Our guys are gonna be gone. But you gotta get that orange shot on the break, go back in on that. If you can make that shot, we can have a chance. If not, if they get in there, they're gonna lock this thing down. You're up. As a coach, you're sitting there thinking to yourself, like, we have got to get a bunch of eliminations on the break. We've got to hope for a penalty, shoot somebody in the face, like get those good quick kills and try to get down the field. But on that field, it's just, it was tough, man. Like, you want to have faith, you know, and I believe everybody in our pit does have faith, but there's the realist in you. You know, I'm, my brain does math really well. Minute 15, 75 seconds divided by two. What are we talking, 37 and a half seconds per point? Keep your composure. But, uh, but then just shut your mouth and we'll talk about it in the fucking meeting. Okay. To lose to the same team twice in two tournaments to knock us out, yeah, it's pretty frustrating. I mean, other than that, our performance too is just we're not hitting our potential and everybody knows this is it and everyone's telling us it. It's starting to get old, so I'm sick of it. Hey, this is how it works. You go through, you shoot right, you're a fucking hero. You miss them, you're a loser. That's how it works. That's it. That's the basic thing. That's the point. And that's how it always works in paintball. He makes the move, he goes in, he shoots, fucking he's a winner. He gets shot, oh fuck, we're losers. That's just how it works. Get like the fuck out of here. I mean, it's, it's when people hey, make moves, hey, that's when they start calling hey, big hey, shit. You know hey, what I mean? Hey, let's get the fuck out of here and go behind Die and talk. Okay? I, why are you all up in my face? I'm the quietest one. Hey, 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 hey. I'm the quietest one hey, right hey. now. I'm not saying I'm anything. very calm right now. That's fine. I don't know why you're all up in my shit. Hey, hey. After their disappointing finish at MAO, the team reconvenes in Sacramento for a three-day practice with Edmonton Impact a week before the Chicago event. I think this field, I mean the field layout, it works for us. This is our kind of layout, you know, we can get down the snake as opposed to the last event. You just sit there, you know? You can fly down the snake, you can fly down the Doritos. And that's the kind of players we have on our team. That's what they want to do, and that's what they thrive at doing. Game, 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 game. Hey, fuck! Game, game, game. Game, game. Game, game. Game, game. over. Friday was a really good day for us. I would say we won the majority of the points. Give a little bit, give a little bit. Oh, give a little bit. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> The second day, I think they, they played a lot better. I think we kind of just slouched around, didn't really put in as much work. brings intense demeanor, which some people are intimidated of, but I think if you embrace it, then it, he can really bring the best out of you. Snake 2, I think it's alright. Once he went to the 3, oh everything's good. Right! Three. But when you hear Snake 2, where the fuck do you think he's gonna be next? Shoot! If you don't listen, we can't shoot people. You had the echo the whole fucking time. Then you sat there, and you, I yelled the echo, and you did not do your job. He wasn't, he wasn't off for a little? I can understand, you know, some of the younger guys, when Mike wants to make a point across, and they're trying to get their point of view back at Mike, I know that's probably what gets him the most, what gets him going. But I'm fucking telling you right now, do your fucking job, Mike, boy. I just have a really bad problem with Dan McConnell with that rookie shit, I know. Well, yeah, well, you're in the pro league, kid. Okay? It's not the end of the world, we lost seven to six but throwing points away, just like not smart shit, you know what I mean? Like, what did you think? We were gonna 70, 80% of them yesterday, and then today, 90%? You didn't think that they had the gumption to fucking fight harder? Everybody's in a 
fucking funk right now, and it's up to us to step the fuck up or fucking lay the fuck down. Fucking end on a positive note. Way to, yeah, back. Way to fucking do that shit. If we're happy fucking and you know milking, it, boys. Hey. Fucking hit, yes. Right? Honestly, it was a great practice, you know? They, they gave us a good look. We saw, we saw them play slow, they played fast, they, they attacked the snake side, they attacked the Dorito side, they went up the center. I don't think that, you know, any other team would have given us a better or worse look. I, I think, you know, at this point in the season, we realized that the tournaments are kind of in our hands and it's up to us to step up. And who we practice and what we do it matters to an extent, but in the end, it's really the ball's in our court to make it happen. Are you okay, Matt? I just got shot in the side and it just kind of like dazed me and still well decided to lay down with me and have a conversation. And honestly, I was just telling them because it was the third day of practice, I'm just tired. You can go. After their successful practice with Impact, the team heads to the city of Chicago with high hopes of turning their year around. We're playing against uh, good old royalty, another fellow die team. We're playing well, you know, we're trying to just get a different look at the field, having a good time, just trying to learn the field, you know, get those last reps in before the uh, big day tomorrow morning. I just melt the shit out of that design tomorrow. You know, being in the humidity in Chicago, it's nice to get a, a day in and kind of get acclimated to the weather, so, you know, you never know what to expect in Chicago, so playing a day early, it's always, it's always nice. For their first match, the team will be up against Omaha Vicious. However, they are trying out something new for this game, with Mike Hinman coaching on the snake side and Steve Humphreys coaching in the pits. Let's fight! Let's go, boys! Let's fight! Some of the snake guys say they can't hear Steve's voice as well, which I don't know how because he's maybe not as loud as I am, but clearly plenty loud. Mouse wanted me to be on the snake side, and they asked me to do that. In the vicious game, Todd had his team well prepared. I think we came in underprepared mentally. Just I don't think we came into it with that same fire in our bellies, you know what I mean? Let's go, boys. Here we go. The team's doing all right. I haven't done my part yet, but as long as we stay in this game, we'll pull it out with experience. Shot out of our bunkers. Okay? We're better than that. Okay? We're a lot better than that. Let's get back on track. Right here, right now. Alright? Let's go back to line one. Let's make it simple. Line one. Mouse, MC, A Rod, Corey, and LJ. Alright? Let's go. They're not gonna give you the opportunity. So you've gotta go make it happen against them. Like you gotta go start bunkering people or try to bunker people with proper time management. I just came down the tape, crawled low and got him. I, he spun, you know? There's no arguing that, and that couldn't change the game. Well, get your gun cleaned up, Kenny, sir. I'm a little tired. Okay, all right, all right. This is a really important point right now. It's two to four, and so far it's been, I think, three minutes. Time's not quite on our side, so we need to get going. Look at the clock, buddy. Go, go! I think maybe you should have together. 0% chance we're going to win this if we sit here because they're smart enough just to sit down, make us come. Well, okay, let's, let's roll the dice, you know? that 
gate next to the netting is so far, it's honestly kind of hard to hear him. So honestly, it was like, it was no point to have him over there. Might as well have him in the pit where he can construct a good game plan and get the right line out there. To take nothing away from their organization, I think our organization overestimated our ability in that game. It's vicious, you know, it's, we're gonna go back and forth, but we're gonna win this game. I really think, you know. That game is done, dude. We have three games that we have to win. It's either that or we go to the fucking challenger division. You guys wanna do that? Then fucking dig deep. Everybody step the fuck up. Look inside yourselves. Not to him, not to him, not to him. Look inside yourselves. Fuck. Let's go, boys. We're better than that. After their loss to Vicious, the team awaits to play their next match against San Diego Dynasty, a team who has already knocked them out of two tournaments this year. Unfortunately, the PSP shuts down all fields due to severe weather coming in. The PSP knew, let's shut all the fields down, it was lightning is what they were worried about, you know. You know, once they run out of the paintball gun, become a lightning rod. Sun's out, no clouds, no rain. Love it. After about an hour of delays, the PSP decides it's safe to start games again, and the Ironmen are hungry for revenge. game didn't start off too well. We went down one to three against them. I ended up winning a one on two against Glenn Takamoto and Brandon Short and it was it was very fortunate because as soon as it came down to that situation, I just decided to run and try to bunker Glenn, see if I could get anything on him and I did. And he ended up spinning on me getting a major penalty so uh, that really helped switch the momentum into our favor. Hey, yeah! Way to play Marcelo! Way to fucking do it! LJ had a monumental brain fart and decided to just run down the Dorito side. About the time he cleared the 50 yard line, he received a shot under the arm and he just kept running down the field to get Dalton and uh, the red flags flew. That then pulls the next body behind LJ. Two minute penalty, blows out that side 4-4. And uh, now you're down in a tough spot, you know. We're gonna have a penalty. LJ's gonna be in the box. Yeah. Did they hang it? Yeah. Well, it's a full tie game. Yeah. Who wants to go win this? Really? I do. That was one of those things that just kind of took the wind from beneath our sails, and they, they won that point, tied it up, and we ended up winning three straight after that. As much as I hate to say this, I almost want to call it lack of heart, or gumption, whatever you want to say. We had the opportunity to win that game, and just because of a single penalty we just let them take it from us. And not having the gumption to come back and win a game like that is unacceptable at the pro level. We gave Dynasty a good fucking ride. We were five, what was it, four, three up, and then we threw it away. We got a major, then we still threw shit away. Lack of hope. I agree with you. No, I agree. I totally agree with you. So do we turn five guys from now on? No, you need to be honest and fucking call us out for what it is. But they can't. Because some of these guys are uncoachable. Then do they need to get cut? I mean, dude, I'm fucking... I fucking agree with you. I'm, I'm just being honest. When you can't talk to somebody about something, when you say something, do X, Y, and Z, and people don't do that. I'm I mean, it's... saying that you can't do that here. I agree. Focus.
do we want to be challengers or what? You know, what's going on? We've put all this talent together. Do we do we want all of it to be for nothing, or are we just going to let this happen to ourselves? It was a huge deal for us. You know, going 0-2, we realized that we probably don't have a chance to make Sunday, but there wasn't a chance we were going to let let ourselves go out there and just get beat up on. At that point, we need to win just because we want to win, just because we have this thing called pride. You know what I mean? And we're the Iron Man. Like we need to go out there and get some Ws. You know. And Infamous is a team that we've had a hard time competing against, so we knew we needed to go out there and give it our all, leave it all on the field, you know? says it's above 90% that that team always wins if you go up 3-0. Listening to Maddie's advice, <laughs> we think we're going to win this game probably. <laughs> and they get right back into the game. Nobody said the beast, and I thought the guy was in the camera. You can't look around the 50 like it's not hot, man. They stole the momentum. They won a few points in a row. They ended up going up, I believe, 5 4. Oh my god. Really? You really just get us a penalty? Wow. Nice, Danny. Good. Nice. Come on! Who's in the box? Well, Danny is. He just walked out and got a penalty. Danny, Danny, thank God. Danny, can turn. Danny, Danny let's go. Danny, Park. Corey, let's go. Well, can see. Can see it. We tied it up. Then they won, going up six five. And uh, we called the timeout, realized what we need to do. We're about to lose this game. This is, this is where it's at. We decided that wasn't going to happen. Not again. Hey, it's game point. Let's go. We got to go. It's not game point. It's six, six to five. five. We, we're going to win this point. Let's go. Two fucking points, boys. Deep side. Marcelo, you Two good? Let's go. Points. We had to win this point to tie it up. I went right down the snake. Brandon Mayo just filled the snake, and I just one-handed him, bunkered him, and then shot the rest of them. Hey, we got this. Feel this. Hey, get those jeans. We got this. Let's go. Overtime. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm in. Malice, let's go. Steven, let's go. Let's turn it. We gotta get that kill on the side. We gotta get that kill on the side. You good? Take a deep breath. You got a minute. We're the same sides. Same sides. You never know what to expect in an overtime. You, are they gonna take a risk and try to win a win the game? Or are they gonna? sit back and I think they took a risk with Bobby stood in the open ended up taking one in the, in the stomach and, and got a major so when you see a flag go in the air and you're playing on, on the field it's like <laughs> um, so yeah it won the game for us it was a quick point 30 seconds yeah! Yeah! way to be on that moment right there I, I just had a smile on my face. I didn't care about anything else that had happened all year long. I realized that the team was coming together and we were finding that mental tenacity and that strength that it takes to be a champion. Hey, <laughs> good job, bro. Hey, was it, the, was it the home guy that got the major? Hey, it was somebody on the snake side. Hey, Mouse, way to fucking be. Hey, way to fucking fight, son. Who gives a fuck, right? Way to fucking be. That was just silly. This is unnecessary. You know better. If you didn't know better, it wouldn't bother me so much, but you know better. Hey, you played your ass off this tournament, man. Huh? 
a way to fight, huh? Listen, that was a fight, man. That's fucking one step. If you're tired, you need to find another gear. We got another game that we gotta win. We're fighting for our fucking lives right now, motherfuckers. I'm fucking proud of you guys, man. When it's going this way, that way, back and forth, plus one, minus one, way to fucking be and fight back. Way to find a way not to fucking lose. Get it the fuck in here, man. Come on, boys. Let's go, motherfuckers. Look in the circle, man. One, two, three. Another important game, last thing we want to be doing is playing for that challenger spot. And again, it's a pride thing and, and still we realize that each game is, you know, it may not mean anything for the Chicago event, but it means something for the Riverside event. You know, as a team, we need to keep coming closer and keep coming together and finding ways to overcome and win and just become a, a tight family like we want to be. been tied two to two and it was one of those situations where we were up bodies it was a three on two we've lost a lot of those this year it's just been one of our downfalls we can't close games when we're up bodies I was in the 40 Dorito and Steven was in the corner behind me and X Factor was lined up in both corners I hear Steven call my name from way back there he's like Marcelo 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 yeah can you hold in the back left yeah, absolutely, I got him. So I said, I start putting the back left in. All right, tell me what he's in. He's in. Sure enough, I knew already the move that he wanted to make, which is one of those things when you start playing with somebody and you get that team chemistry, you know exactly what people want to do. And sure enough, it worked like a charm. He runs right by me, bunkers the back right. As that happens, I shoot the back left. We win the point. Neither one of us got shot. And it was as simple of a thing as that is, that's, that's something that sounds very simple um, when you say it, but it's something that we just haven't been doing as a team this year. We're up 4-2, and they just had uh, Archie in the 50 Dorito and a guy in the snake, and we had three guys, Marcelo, McCormick, and Danny Park. Danny got shot out silly, and honestly, I think Marcelo had a chance to come down the field and bunker out Archie, but uh, they shot him all out and got that point, so now it's 4-3. Are we trying to get this next point? It's one minute, you wanna? Yeah. We can get a G off the break. Go. With a record of two and two, the team waits for the outcome of the Dynasty vs. Infamous game to determine their fate. If Infamous wins by four, they will move on to the finals. But Dynasty goes on to win the match seven to two. This moves the Iron Men to the number three seed in their bracket, and they don't have to fight for their lives on Sunday. It's a building process, and it's tough. It's tough sometimes with the building process because you want instant gratification. You want to win now. Houston, he did it last year. Why can't we do it? That was unique. So, you know, just trying to build and trying to get yourself into a better place. Even if you can't win the battle, get yourself in a position where you can win the war. Pretty ridiculous. <laughs> Danny does it pretty pretty great, so. 